Greater Faith Outreach, a ministry reaching the world by spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. If you need a word of hope, encouragement, prayer, or a copy of today's program, log on to greaterfaithoutreach.com. Now I present to you the host of the program, motivational speaker, teacher of the Word of God, Pastor Elizabeth. Well, good evening. Good evening and welcome again to Greater Faith Outreach Ministries. I'm so glad that you could tune me in. Well, I want you to get your Bibles out because this is traveling through the Word of God and we're going to do it together. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Okay. In Romans chapter 6, Paul is talking here, and he said, What shall we do? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Again, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You see, uh, this, has been, uh, <laughs> this has been a problem. The most attacks on the doctrine of salvation by grace alone is that it encourages sin. And that's not true. And if people think that, that's wrong, you know, because why should we continue to sin? This is certainly, a, you know, a possibility. You know, we could come to that conclusion, though it's a wrong conclusion. For the teaching about grace in chapter 5, we're going to go to that. Apparently, Paul had been accused see, of teaching this false doctrine called antinomianism to silence his accusers. Okay? Paul shows in this chapter, in chapter 5, that a believer who continues in sin would be denying his or her own identity in Christ. You see? He's showing here in chapter 6 that if you, can, if you continue to deny that, you're denying your own identity in Christ. Hmm, think about that for a moment. Shall you continue in sin? See, antinomianism um, in Christian doctrine is the belief that Christians are not bound by established moral laws but should rely on faith and divine grace for salvation. You see, the word antinomianism comes from two Greek words. The first is anti, meaning against, and nomos, meaning law. Antinomialism means against the law. Um, this means that Christians are not required to observe the Old Testament law as a means of salvation. You see, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he fulfilled the Old Testament law. In Romans 10 and 4, it says, For, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That's to the believers, okay? In Galatians 3, 23 through 25, it says, Now, before faith came, we were held captive under the law. Remember back, I talk a lot about the Le Leviticus teaching and all of that. It says, But, um, but if we were imprisoned to that. But now we're no longer under that. It says, Now, before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So under that, in order that we might be justified by faith until the time came. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under guardians. In Ephesians 2.15, it says, By abolishing the law of commandments, com commandments expressed in audience, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. So what is God saying? Our response to, to, to this is that we should live a consecrated 
life, you know, out of gratitude, you know, out of gratitude. And um, I always bring this up because it's so important, it's so vital, and it's not just words. This is this this works, you know. If you apply this to your life, it works. Romans twelve one and two. This is appeal of Paul that's talking to talking to us now. He said, "I beg of you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living." sacrifices holy and acceptable to god which is our spiritual worship in some uh books of of the um, some different verses of the bible's translations of the bible it says by the mercies of god that we present our bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable to god which is our reasonable our reasonable service unto god you see Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, this is what happens when you continue to walk in the will of God, the word of God. You walk right into the will of God. When we continue to to uh, not be conformed to the world, being turned away from that, and and present yourself living sacrifices. And I always talk about sometimes, you know, it's hard to get into the Word. You know, that's a sacrifice themselves, to lock yourself in sometime and just get into it. But once you do that, then you understand. Then you get, you know, knowledge and you get fed and, and you can't be, can't, no one pull you away from it because that's truth there. It becomes real to you. It becomes a personal relationship to you. Okay? It becomes real and needed. That's why God said, you know, that we need the word of God. You know, every day, daily. I, I ask the Lord daily, give me, give me my bread. I daily need a bread, a, a, the bread, the light, the word. You know, if we abide in the word, you shall understand the truth. In these and other words of God, we are taught that there is a habit of mind and life which precedes the understanding and the truth. True discipleship, it consists in first following, then knowing the Lord. Following first and then knowing the will of God, then knowing the Lord. Okay? We must live and experience truth in order to know it. You see? Life fellowship with Jesus is the only school of science of heavenly things. Can't nobody teach you those things. You know, only by following Jesus. That's why I said abide in Christ Jesus. Yes, the law, it came to expose sin and to show us how deadly and powerful sin is. And it draws us to Christ. I knew it did to me. You know, I said, Lord, I can't do it on my own. You see, it's a losing battle. When you're trying to be a good person and do things on your own, that how long is that going to last? You know, the point is that the law deals with the spirit. We can keep, we cannot, we cannot keep the law in the flesh. Again, we cannot keep the law in the flesh. And that's what Paul was talking about in Romans. I'm not going to go there, but you can read it yourself. And I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it when he had that struggle there. And he said it was like uh, tying a dead man to him, carrying a dead man daily because there was such a struggle there. He said, well, I wanted to do this, do good, but the carnal man wouldn't allow him. And like I said, the law deals with the spirit of the man, okay? The real me, the crucified me. Wow, I didn't want to, I'm going to go there. The crucified me. You see, in the beginning... Okay, we're go- I'm going to try to break this down and, and, and illustrate to you what it means, the regenerated spirit that it cannot sin. We have a spirit with inside of us that cannot sin, that is perfect. That's where the Holy Spirit resides, okay? Okay, when Adam fell, he lost that part, okay? We'll look at it as like a vessel, okay? That's a vessel which with within... Each person, each person has 
a cup or a vessel or a container within them. Okay? We only see, we only talk about the, the body and the soul of man. The reason why is because you can see the body. And you can feel the soul, the things that's coming out of the soul with the mind, the will, and the emotion. We get emotional and everything. So we can feel. We know there's a soul there. We can see the body. You know, we know there's a body there. But what about the invisible spirit with inside? That's the main Oh, wow. That's it right there. It's the spirit of man. You see, with that, that's where Adam and Eve was able to fellowship with the Lord. You see, they had full, you know, they had like, oh, the communication was awesome that they had with the Lord. You know, the conscious, they had that God consciousness, which was inside that, that cup, like I said, that vessel, that container carried God it's, you know, the carried God, because God said we are in his image, you know. And so when the Satan came, they lost that. And they, you know, when they disobeyed Christ and followed after the enemy, they were destroyed. That part was destroyed. I would say it was poisoned. Instead of having God consciousness in that cup, it was evil consciousness in that cup. It was poison in that cup. Okay, and that kind of bled down or uh, or I'll say um, kind of filtered down to the soul, you know, that was a leakage from the what Adam from uh, that cup of Adam, the sinful cup would leak down into the soul of man and it filled that soul with all manner of evil. And, you know, you can read all through the Bible. It talks about what what sin is you know the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life and the things that come from all of that you know we can oh it's the list of them we're going to go over hopefully we'll have time we can talk about it and it says what comes out of the heart is what defiles a man so that cup was filled with poison that cup that was filled with god was now emptied and filled with Okay, but what happened? Jesus came. Okay, let's read it. Let's go back to chapter five. This is beautiful. And I hope you have an ear to hear what the spirit of God is saying to you tonight. Because if you get this right, you've got it. Okay, then you'll have so much gratitude and love and worship towards our father for what he's done. Okay, chapter 5 of the book of Roman. Okay, we can start 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, he died for the ungodly. Think about that. When we were yet in our sins, he died for us. The Bible tells us that, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believed in that shall shall not die, not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. And eight, it says, but. Okay. Okay. And eight says, but God demonstrate his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us much more then having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were recounseled to God through the death of his son, much more having been recounseled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Wow. Let's go on. Through one man, the world, through one man, sin entered the world. Through one man now, sin entered the world. And death through sin and thus death spread to all men, to 
everybody. No matter how you say you're a good person or whatever, it spread through the whole creation. See, this is a universal thing, okay? It spread. Because all sin, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgressions of Adam. You see? But all is considered sinners. Who is a type of him who was to come? But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man offense, one man's offense, by that one man, Adam's offense, many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of of the one man Jesus Christ abound to many and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation but the free gift which came from many offenses which came from many offenses result in justification for in by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, which more those who receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as though the as through the one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through the one man, righteousness, <laughs> righteousness act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as one man's uh, disobedience, many were made sinners. Many were made sinners. Okay? So also, the one man, obedience, many, through one man's obedience, many were made righteous. You see, it was through Christ's obedience that made us righteous. See, ah, oh, what a way maker. God is a way maker. The only way out was through Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the one without any sin. So Jesus came back to fulfill that. See, the law had a demand on it. Jesus fulfilled that demand and that's why i love the book of roman and it, it breaks it down it makes it plain and it tells us what shall we do shall we continue to sin that grace may abound this is chapter six and one it says certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, was baptized into his death? Wow. You know, I remember when I was baptized in the spirit, I, mm, uh, you know, there's different experiences. People have different experiences. You know, yours might be different from mine, you know, so forth. But, you know, there's different experiences in that, you know, we automatically receive once we, um, believe by faith we receive a new spirit within us like i said that cup is now filled up now okay that's the new creation that's the new man that's the real man that's the real you the spirit man okay the born again when you're born again you're born again of the spirit but i remember uh it was quite some time ago when um i got filled with the spirit i used to go to the church and everything and i'd pray and i you know like i said i went through all the things but i really it was like a dead thing dead religion for me you know um i didn't really feel the love and the gratitude that i should have felt and i felt and i remember one time it was oh my children i my my kids were babies they were real young when i received the lord and they were in one room and i was in the living room and i was praying and all of a sudden it was like, I describe it as a, like I was above myself. The real me was above me. 
okay? And these words start flowing out of me. It was like a little uh, 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 oriental man or something. I could describe it. Just was inside of me speaking these words, you know, which is, you know, that's the way I describe it, you know. But all these words just start flowing, flowing without of me. These words that I couldn't understand. You know, it's like I had no control of it, but it felt so good. And this took place for hours because I remember looking at the clock when I got up. You know, I was filled. It's like my whole being was just filled. With the just the mental faculties and everything was just flooded. You know, <laughs> just drenched in that sweet all of the Holy Spirit. You know, and uh, I, I. I, I, after that experience, you know, I just, it just changed my whole life. He becomes so real to me, you know, and I think about what he said. He said, blessed are those who believe me and never seen me than those who have seen me and never believe me. You see, there was people in Jesus days that was around him, but they never believed what was going on. They didn't understand. But he said, blessed are you out there because you, you believe. Okay. Ah, oh, wow. I have so much worry, but so little time. But this vessel, Jesus filled it. <clears throat> and uh, that's why he told them, he said, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to fill you up. Okay. And see, the problem is, you no, know, it, 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 the body it, it reflects what leaks down into the soul. When you're, you know, when you're not a believer or you uh, don't understand what the process is being taken, you know, that's taking place inside you, then whatever leaks down into the soul from your spirit, you act out, okay? It, it, whether it be pride or sexual immoralities or hate or fear or, you know, out of those things, like I said, out of the heart comes these things. And that's found in Matthew 15, uh, 19. It talks about out of the heart comes these different things, the pride and the, the, the lust of the flesh and uh, the immorality, hatred and jealousy and envy and all those things. You see, this was, a Adam, this was in Adam's life, okay? Adam's life was filled with this, you know, and whatever, like I said, whatever comes out through that cup leaks down into the soul. And now that if we have the Holy Spirit residing in us, the container, which is releasing life in us, releasing the Christ life in us, you know, Ooh, I love John, you know, John 15, that's one of my favorite scripture. Cause it really, it, it really defines what we are to do. You know, we are to hold on to Jesus. I always tell people you have to have bulldog faith, faith. You have to hold on to Jesus like a bulldog, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that, you know, but he describes it in, uh, in John 15 as, um, a tree, you know, like the branches and the vine and how we get our nourishment from the vine. I remember the other day I went outside and my car was drenched with all this old sticky stuff on it. I said, what is this on the windows and everything? That was a sap from the tree. And, you know, God always talked in parables so we could understand, you know, but he said to hold on to that vine. There's life in the vine, you know, instead of uh, going back to that lower nature that, you know, with inside that uh, but we you know we do people do fall you know even in christ we do fall now don't get me wrong but we're not a practicing sinner anymore we're practicing righteousness you know not because we have to that's because it's our nature okay it is our nature and you know what i love about uh, 15 11 it says there's things I have spoken to you. This is Jesus talking. There's things I have, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be filled. You see, a lot of times people walking around with no joy, 
It's because they feel with that old Adam nature about worrying about all these things and all that. And he said, what he's doing now is not a burden for us. You know, to abide in him is not a burden. He said, I am the vine in 15, five. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abide in me and I abide in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask anything, whatever you desire, because your desires are always change. It's, it's changing. If you're in Christ, you're going to have new desires. You're going to desire what he desires. <laughs> yeah. And it's his joy to have you come into the family come into the body of christ Mm. well i see my time is out but i love you and god love you and be blessed and and just follow the lead of the holy spirit because he won't lead your own hope encouragement prayer or a copy of today's program log on to greaterfaithoutreach.com 